and shouting forever and we will be growing in love. Hallelujah. Can you just imagine that? Thank you, Jesus. At this moment, we'll have a prayer of thanksgiving by Sister Michelle, followed by the scripture reading by Sister Deidreya. Titus 2, 1 to 5. Titus 2, 1 to 15. But speak though the things which become sound doctrine, that the aged men be sober, grave, temperate, sound in faith, in charity, in patience. The aged woman likewise, that they be, that they be in behavior as becometh holiness, not fall accuser, 
not given to much wine, teachers of good things, that they may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husband, to love their children, to be decreed chaste, keepers at home, good, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of God be not blasphemed. Young men likewise exhort to be sober-minded, in all things she will thyself a pattern of good works, in doctrine showing uncorrupt, uncorruptness, great gravity, sorry, sincerity, so, some speech that cannot be condemned, that he that is that he that is of the country part may be ashamed, having no evil things to say of you. Exhort servants to be obedient unto their own masters, and to please them well in all things not answered again, not pointing, but showing all things into it, delity that they may adorn the doctrine of God, our Savior in all things. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appearance to all men, teaching us, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly loss, we should live soberly, righteousness and godly in this present world. Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of great God and our Savior Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. 15, can we read together? These things speak and exhort and rebuke with all authority. Let no man despise thee. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, Sister Patriarch. At this time, we have our second in by the praise team. It's all in Bless the Lord, that's in 294. The mighty God is Jesus, the Prince of Peace is He.
everything. I told you before, our team today, you may be seated. Our team today is Giants Must Fall, Aris I have given you a moment to think about your giants. And just as Solomon had concluded in Proverbs that all is vanity, and the old duty of man is to praise God and keep his commandment, I too, this is just my opinion, I concluded that the scariest of all giants is fear. And I know that my God being almighty, all powerful and all everything, he does give us solution for our fear. And in 2 Timothy 1 verse 17, he did tell us that. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Amen? So it is for us today to tap into our potential. We are so much more than what we think. And if you think that you can be that, then you can actually be that. Everybody always tells us that you get what you put in the computer. But what you put in your brain is actually what you get out. Amen, somebody? Amen. We are here to glorify God today. At this time, Sister Tanisha is coming to do the media announcement and welcome. God bless her as she comes. Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord, everyone. Look what the Lord has done. Look what.
the way, my dear God, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, you may be seated at this time. Praise God. God is such a good God. Hallelujah, Jesus. And there has been a joy in my spirit, praise the Lord Jesus, from this week, praise God. And I know that God is up to something wonderful. I can't be pointing, praise God, but I'm worshiping Him, praise the Lord Jesus. Oh, great God, even though at times I may be down and out, praise God, but God still deserves our worship. Praise the Lord Jesus. I want to welcome you all into the sanctuary this morning. Praise God. Hallelujah. And you can realize that I'm so unfit as I'm breathing so heavily after this. Stamping my feet a little times. Praise God. But thank God for the exercise. Hallelujah. <laughs> thank you, Jesus. Do we have anyone who's seen us for the very first time this morning in the sanctuary? It's your first time with us? Anyone? Praise God, nobody. If you're on Facebook, you're visiting us for the very first time this morning. We want to say welcome to Pentecostal Sanctuary. Praise the Lord. Please enjoy the service this morning. And you can send us a message, a private message, if you want us to pray with you, or if you just want somebody to talk with you. So you can send us a message. Praise the Lord Jesus. So we have some persons celebrating their birthdays this week. Today in particular, we have our, one of our new converts, Brother Aaron Benjamin. He's celebrating his birthday today. And throughout the week, we have John Pierre Crooks, Sister Burke, and Sister Josephine Grant. Please call them and wish them a happy birthday. Praise the Lord. And I'm asking us as well, to reach out to other brothers and sisters within our sanctuary. It is so important that we do so. Some persons have not been coming out. Some of us have been going through a rough time, praise God. We all have our different struggles and issues going on. Praise the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Reach out, give a call. You know, allow a smile to be placed on somebody's face. Praise God. You with me this week to do that? Praise the Lord Jesus. Let us do that. And on Wednesday, we have a couple who will be celebrating their 20th wedding anniversary. And that's Deacon Orville and Sister Beverly. Praise God. Let's call them up and wish them a happy anniversary. Are you happy to be in the house of the Lord? Amen. Do have yourself a wonderful week. God bless you all. The Lord Jesus. These are the announcements. Please see this. We please continue to pray in prayer for these names: Pastor Robert Ellis and his family, Sister Lurleen Ellis, Minister Laurie Rainford, Sister Shauna Borden, Sister Tachika Jones, Sister Grace Small, and Sister Veronica Thompson. All needed by touch from the Lord and on Monday night at 7.45 our Zoom ministry meetings and all the links will be sent to the ministry leaders. On Tuesday is our regular day of fasting and prayer. We meet in the sanctuary all be well at 6 a.m. and 11 a.m. for prayer. And then we have at 8 p.m. corporate Zoom session at 8. On Thursday will be our Bible study with our pastor. And on Friday, Zoom youth service at 7 p.m. On Friday as well at 9 o'clock will be our online open prayer day. On Saturday morning will be our early morning prayer. And this begins at 6 a.m. Our upcoming events, you're all invited to participate in our National Group Seminar 2020 on Saturday, November 7th. And this is via Zoom. The link will be sent. And, oh my word, we've been looking for this. We've been looking for this. 
It's Pentecostal Center presents this year our first virtual singles conference. All the single people in the house say, Oh, bless the Lord Jesus. It's Adam Meets Eve, and this will be on December 4 and 5. Details will come to you later. God bless you. Also, a very special note from our pastor. He said, due to the inclement weather, we will be foregoing our midday service. So please stay home. We, he does not want anybody to be in harm's way. So please tune in to this service. That's those who are online. God bless you. Those of you who are here, get home safely right after the service. God bless you as we continue to worship the Lord. The harvest is great. Labors are few. The time is short and the matter is urgent. God bless you. Praise the Lord everybody. Could you just lift your hands all over the atmosphere in this room and magnify our God. Hallelujah. The storms are raging on the outside. But I believe that we have an anchor on the inside. Hallelujah. And his name is Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You worship with me while I minister Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, the
I read Proverbs 6, verse 38. It says, Give, and it will be given to you. They will pour into your lap a good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. For by your standard of measure, it will be measured to you in return. Amen. Our God is so good to us. We now worship the Lord with our substance, acknowledging that He is the creator and the source of all our blessing. In giving God His tithes, we by faith honor God as our financial partner and believe in for increase and prosperity in all our endeavors. Let's give cheerfully, liberally, and faithfully as we confident that God will give a bountiful harvest. Amen. At this time, it's the ring for this one. Bless the offering. Praise the Lord. Father Lord, as we come before you today, God, nothing good we have done but because of your grace and mercy. Father Lord, as we go to give a portion, Lord God, that you would have blessed us with, Lord, but I know that it is received in the God. And as Lord God, you are pleased with your offering, Lord God, I pray, oh God, as you pour out a blessing on each and every one of us. Lord God. Even those that have the mind to give us some power of having right now to give. Bless them as well, Lord God. Use it for your glory and honor and the furtherance of your ministry, Lord God. Lord God, I just want to thank you, Lord God, for what you are doing in our lives. Oh, great God, what you will continue to do in our lives. And we ask these mercies in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The praise team is coming out of the you here from our Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
for me to say, okay, then fine. I'm going to start driving and start visiting here constantly, constantly. Remember, in 1997, November, this community is going to be 22 years of death. Say, praise God. So, that's the woman I was in on that side, she was in on that side, and I just get up. I got straight up to get baptized, and that was this trip. But at the same time, while well, I was 21, 22, thereabouts, a lot keep talking to me, talking to me, because I grew up in an area where a lot of violence. I know, well, we lived in the, the garrison, you know, certain things. Yes. But I never made that get better for me, praise God. I saw a gun, cocaine, the only name it. So my friends said, went off to carry out drugs. They asked me if I'm not coming to the That's not my line. I'd rather stay on the cookie. I cut my way up. Oh, praise God. And then now, uh, after in the 90s, 2000s, most of them came back, get caught to them time and come back. And so I'm seeing everything around and I said, yeah, man, I'm a good man. Those, so, it, those guys, because go, we go. And those guys, every time I see me, I go, I got to know. Sometimes I, I do things, sometimes I don't. I said, listen, if you just stay and you cook it enough, you have much better off. You wouldn't have nothing to talk about in today. Amen? Amen? So I remember come to church, get saved, and then start. I remember Father Oliver, Devon Mian, Devon Mian, Peter King, those guys, they had an impact in my life. And when I came in, I said, listen, I need one person to sit to. One. I just need one person to look up to. Challenge my part. I remember we have Sunday school class. In the canteen, and one thing God said to me, and never forget. Before you find a friend in church, listen carefully. Before you find a friend in church, take Jesus as a friend. That, that never depart. Never. It's despite whatever situation you find yourself in. Never you tell. Find a friend in church and then you start telling them your business and so on. That same person again. You know what comes. I take that that stand and say, listen, if I'm finding a friend, and then the problem I always got to him because he was my son school teacher. Then the two brown sister, brown deceased, and another one, she lived in Manchester. I said to him, listen, one Sunday morning, I think one of us was in the class too. Yeah. I said, um, you know what? Next week Sunday, find a Bible verse and come. The favorite scriptures. Give me scriptures, start finding out, say, all right, then. I search the scripture, I search the scripture, then I find one scripture, Colossians. And that scripture stuck to me, didn't be using Christ. The Christ is a miracle of God. See those things which are above. I want to see those things up above. That scripture, no matter what money, money don't, money's not a problem to me. Fame is not a problem. So you can anchor into God's kingdom that will ever stick to you, no matter what the circumstances may be. I remember 2010, I get married in 98. I remember 2010, I got the God's condition. Praise God. I remember that December, I ate, I ate everything I can think of. Sorry, poor, you name it. And that morning, I got up and I said, I said, I need to feel well. I remember I said, I said, listen, I need to go Hospital. At that time in 2010, praise God, there's an incredible name. Tiffany. I said, she can't. I was saying, listen, you're going to drive the car. No. And I said, you can't drive the car, man. Just what's in the lane, just stay in the lane. And she said, to the hospital. When I reached the hospital, I remember I was sitting on probably left or right. I don't quite remember. So I come and came in. One sick right beside me died. I said, Lord God. But that was so good that um, they string up potato that same night. And they cancel it. That same given night, they cancel it. Then my wife said to me, um, in a in the operation, and I said, Why? She said, I can't see that in the operation. It's okay, then fine. But I want to get rid of the pain because men don't like pain, period. So, they should be for the final year, 2011, to the WHO. When I didn't think, 
string up again. Cancer. Say the seed. That have something in store for you. Hallelujah, Jesus. The third time they string up again. Praise God. Up to this day, have we done an operation? Up to this day, have we done an operation? Circumstances, but guess what? I can assure you, I can guarantee you that the Lord Jesus Christ He saves, He keeps, He satisfies. God bless you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. What's your story? A songwriter said. If I could write all the things that God has done, it would really surprise me how much He really did. At this time, we have a selection from the praise team, and then we we'll have the message coming from the Bless the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. We need to praise the Lord from the redeemed.
everyone to hold on. Amen. So I'd like to say is I have somebody with me to share my head and I feel his presence nearly every day. Hallelujah. Oh, his praise is up to God for his good. For his mercies and endurance. The Lord bless you, brothers and sisters. I turn you in the word of the Lord to 1 Samuel chapter 17. And I will read, amen, just a few passages because you are well acquainted with the account of this event. 1 Samuel 17 verse 4, And there went out a champion out of the camp of the Philistines named Goliath of God, whose height was six cubic and a span, and that would translate to over nine feet. And he had an helmet of brass upon his head, and he was armed with a coat of mail, and the weight of the coat was five thousand shekels of brass hallelujah amen that's about 18 pounds the head of his spear amen lift your hands and give God praise he stood and cried unto the armies of Israel verse 8 and they said unto them why are we come out to set your battle in array? I'm not I a Philistine, and you servant to Saul. Choose you a man for you, and let him come down to me. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you for your words, and we ask for your divine blessings and inspiration, Lord. Upon your words we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. I want to greet the congregation in the name of the Lord. God bless you this morning. I greet our ministers in the house, all our leaders and our guests. God bless you. I want to remind especially those who may be at home contemplating to attend our midday service that due to the adverse weather forecast, we will be, amen, foregoing the midday service. Amen. But God's willing, we will join on Zoom tonight, amen, at 7 for our evening service. This morning, I want to draw your attention to the happenings that brought David fame and launched his ministry. And I want to preach to you about the slain of a giant. And uh, everyone has situations that we face in our lives where the challenge and the adversity is much bigger than we can handle on our own. Uh, giant represents an adversity that when you look at it, you are outmatched and outclassed and given no chance against Amen. this situation. And these are common experiences that we face in this life where we are faced with contending circumstances that in the eyes of the onlooker seems hopeless and seems like a lost cause. And that is the case because the challenge seems to be a mismatch. You know you're up against a giant when you can't figure out how you're going to overcome this one. 
You know you're up against a giant when the maths don't add up. And when you put in the figures and try to balance books, all that comes on your screen is an E that signifies an arrow. Yeah. Or you see an indefinite number after the decimal. You know you're up against a giant when you look at the demands and you know that there is no way you're going to be able to meet that demand with your resource. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And everybody at some times in our lives are going to face this situation. Yes, sir. We stand as an obstacle to block our path forward. And to prevent us from entering into our divine destiny. But I'm here to tell somebody today that giants do fall. That's right. That's right. And I want to tell you, you can slay your giant. Whatever that situation is that seems unbearable. That seems undefeatable. No matter how big it is, no matter how tall it stands, with God you can overcome the foe and be victorious. Amen. I want us to understand that the greatest tool of a giant is not their strength. Because in real terms, a giant isn't really all that strong. You know, a giant is a person whose hormone is out of balance. And they have an oversupply of the growth hormone. And because they grow so much so fast, their organs are affected. They are not agile. They can't maneuver as easily as you can. So the greatest tool of a giant is not their strength, but their greatest weapon is the power of intimidation. That imposing look send the fear in the foe. This was a case with the spies who went to view the land. They didn't test the giants to see their strengths. They were intimidated by their sights and came back and told Moses, we were like grasshoppers when we look at them. And so I want to remind you, brothers and sisters, as I remind myself, that the foe is not and the giant is not as impregnable as he may look. The greatest weapon he has is that bark of his. The Bible says when the lion came out and spoke, his voice would cause the hills to shake. And the children of Israel retreated and went to hide just by the sound of his voice and by the look of his figure. Amen. But I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that a giant's bark is bigger than his might. And it is the fear of the foe that causes and kills our faith. Weaken the knees and cause the heart to bow. And so the Bible tells us repeatedly that we must fear not. That's right. Yes, fear defeats us more often than the foe does. Yes, sir, so true. But the Bible tells us that God has not given us the spirit of fear but of love and of power and of a sound mind. Yes. The thing that you need to defeat the giant is a sound mind. Yes, sir. A sound mind 
That's what the word of God does. It gives you a sound mind. Yeah. It gives you a divine perspective wherein you can process and understand. And even when you don't understand, you can accept the workings of life. Somebody say amen. 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 Psalms 27 verse 14 says, Wait on the Lord and be of good courage. Be of good courage. And he shall strengthen thy heart. Psalms 31, 24 says, Be of good courage. And he shall strengthen your heart. All ye that hope in the Lord. Yes, brothers and sisters. I want us to know that is in, in this season of adversity, when there are crises coming left, right, and center, we must be strong in the Lord and be of good courage. And must not allow the storms that are blowing to cause us to doubt the ability of God or to cause our faith to waver. But the word of God still stands sure and God is still good. And his mercies is still everlasting and his truth endure it to all generations. I want to tell you this morning what David did when he confronted his giant. Goliath was a career soldier. As Saul told David, he has been a soldier from his youth. And you are just a youth, David. Yes, Goliath was a career soldier. David was just a little shepherd boy. Tending to sheep in the solitude of the desert. That seems like a perfect mismatch for a little shepherd boy to be confronted with a career soldier that is nine feet tall. One that has caused the most able soldiers of Saul's army to be running and hiding. Uh -huh. One that has caused the trained mercenaries of Israel to be looking for cover. Yes, sir. So true. Here, this little shepherd boy, hallelujah, was preparing to have a shift in his ministry. Hallelujah. And then I wonder if somebody knows that there comes a time when God shifts your ministry. So true, sir. He gives you an anointing that shifts your ministry. Yes. When Samuel called David from the backside of the desert and poured an anointing upon him, he had a shift in his ministry. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes, and I do believe that God is doing some shifting in this season. Amen. And the giants did come to cause that shift to be complete. Yes, what God has done in the inner sanctum, amen, with Samuel, was about now to be manifested before all Israel. He was now about to shift this little shepherd boy and take him from the backside of the desert and put him in the palace to prepare him for the next leg of his ministry when he would sit on the throne. Hallelujah. And lift your hands and worship God somebody. Amen. I want you to know that God is getting ready to ship somebody's ministry. Amen. Where you are now, God is going to move you. Hallelujah. And call you to another calling. You got to be prepared not to run from the adversities that you face because this adversity is preparing you for a shift in your ministry. If some of you already feel it in your spirit, 
but you're running from it and you're avoiding it. You need to step up and say, here I am, Lord. Let your will be done. <laughs> Hallelujah. You see, David was not even supposed to be on the sea. But he got there through a divine conspiracy. God conspired for him to be there. Amen. And the father called him and said, Come, David. I want you to take some food down to your brethren. And you go and bring back report and tell me how the battle is going. Hallelujah. Because David, brothers, they were trained soldiers. And David went on the battlefield to bring them some rationing, some supply. Amen. But when he got there, amen, he heard the cry of Goliath. And he saw the fear upon the faces of the people of God. He saw the responses of the soldier. And he was baffled by what he saw. Hallelujah. Amen. I want to tell you how David slow his giant. And I want you to know that you can also slay every giant that comes to confront you in this life. Because there are some giants in this land. I wonder if somebody knows there are some giants in this land. But we are not going to run like the spies. But we are going to stand up like Cain, like Abel, hallelujah. And Caleb, amen, and says, we are well able. Because with us is the almighty hands of God. I want you to know that the anointing was up on David. David got this anointing not because he was the strongest. But he got this anointing because he was a worshiper. Amen. Amen. He got this anointing not because he was on the front line and in the public view. But he got this anointing because he knew the secret place of the Most High. He got this anointing not because he was popular with man, but because he was familiar with God. And I want you to know David did not complain about his lot of being in the field as a seeming black sheep of the family. He wasn't complaining about the task he got out in the field while his brothers could be around the house attending to things and sleeping in their divan. He just went about his duty cheerfully worshiping God and he took his harp and made melody and made music in the backside of the desert. I want you to know it's your worship that's going to give you the anointing. That's what's going to attract the anointing of God upon your life. If you can't preach, learn to worship. If you can't teach, learn to worship. If you can't administrate, then you just learn to worship. Because the worship that you give unto God is going to let an anointing hit you. And when that anointing hits you, God is going to take you where you need to go. And he's going to make you into what you need to be. And he's going to give you what you need to get. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So when David was appalled by a man, what he saw as these trained, strong soldiers that were equipped were covering in fear and the righteous indignation of David arose and he began to inquire 
He was inquiring, how can I go and face that giant? And as he walked among the soldiers and inquired among his brethren, his brethren rebuked him, his brothers say to him, you need to go home and go attend to the sheep because we know you're a mischievous little fellow and you came down here from mischief. Amen. And, 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 and they diminish. Amen. The fate. They defiled in their eyes the fate of David. They rebuked David and they put David in his place. Amen. Somebody's going to want to put you in your place when you begin to step out of faith. When you begin to take on the enemies. Amen. They're going to want to keep you in your place and tell you where you ought to sit and tell you what you ought to be and tell you where you ought to go. But when you have the anointing of God upon your life, the anointing is going to get you there. No matter how man evaluates you and no matter how they assess you and position you the anointing of God the sovereign work of God will overrule the will of man the opinion of man the views of man the perception of man and God sees in you what man can see Hallelujah. And the thing about David, he did not stop long enough around the doubters. He was searching for somebody who would confirm his faith. So the Bible said he was walking all around the camp. Just want somebody to confirm his faith. And they were putting him down. Hallelujah. And I hear David say to the doubters. He said, is there not a cause? Amen. He says, destiny is calling. He says, there is a cause that presents itself. He said, this is a moment. This is a moment. This this is a moment. Amen. And many people miss their moment. But David says, I'm not going back home because I have a keen sense that God is up to something big in this moment. I just feel like something is being set up by God. When his brothers saw a giant, David saw an opportunity to glorify God. And he said, is there not a cause? I want somebody to know that the cause is greater than the man. The cause is greater than our fears. The cause is greater than our doubt. Amen. And David knew the cause and he rose to the cause. Hallelujah. He got audience with Saul. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And Saul said, man, you're going out to fight a giant who has been a warrior from he was a youth and you're just a little youth. Hallelujah. But David says, I'm not taking the testimony of Saul. I'm not taking the testimony of my brothers because I have a testimony of my own. Come on, somebody. Don't run from your battles because your little battles is preparing you for the giant. It's preparing you for a battle that is going to shift you. Amen. Into another dimension. And David pull out his testimony. He says, I have something that Goliath don't have. I have a testimony that I've received from the anointing of God. And he said, listen me, Saul. I've heard your logics. I've heard your rationale. I've heard all your platitudes. But just give me 
one chance to get you my testimony because there was a time when I was alone with my flock in the backside of the desert and there came a lion and took a lamb out of my flock and I didn't run like I see these soldiers running I didn't hide like I see your captains hiding I didn't cower like I see your generals covering but I rose up and I stepped out and when I stepped out the anointing of God came over me sometimes you can't wait for the anointing you gotta step out and when you step out the anointing is gonna come for God told Joshua put your foot in the water don't wait for Jordan to roll back but take the initiative and put your foot Wet up your foot, wet up your foot. Somebody give God praise. Yes, he said to the man on the bed, take up your bed and walk. Somebody give God a praise. <laughs> Hallelujah. The day he says, I know what God can do. Because I didn't just read it in the law. I know. What God can do, I didn't just read it in the Pentateuch, but I've experienced it for myself. You need a personal experience with God that will silence every voice of the devil, that will silence every voice of demon, that will silence every voice of doubt, that will silence every voice of fear. You need a personal experience with God that you can draw on. And will somebody need to face your battles and fight them? Because there is no testimony if there is no test. Stop complaining about your situation. Stop complaining and murmuring about your test. If you don't get a test, you can't get a testimony. If I didn't have a problem, some songwriters say, I wouldn't know that God could solve them. So I want somebody to put your hand in the air and shout hallelujah anyhow. Ain't no let your problems get you down. And when temptation come your way, say this is my test, but I'm gonna get a testimony. Somebody give God a praise in the house because God is positioning you and he's shifting you. He's taking you from the shepherd's feet and he's about to put you on a throne in a palace but you gotta slay that giant. You gotta confront that giant. You gotta face that giant. Somebody give God a praise. David, his testimony was so convincing, he got Saul's approval. Yes, Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. I tell you, child of God, maybe you don't understand theology. And you may not understand eschatology and hermeneutics and sociology. And you may not understand demonology. But if you have a testimony, amen, if you have a test theology in your back pocket, you will never be, amen, disadvantaged by men's theology. Oh, I know what God can do. That's what David said. I didn't read about it. I didn't hear about it. But I've experienced the power of God. Because when I went out after that God, that lion, that lion, that lion, that is like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. When I went 
thought uh, and the anointing took me. Uh, I held the lion uh, and I opened his mouth uh, and I took out my sheep. Uh, I wonder if somebody knows uh, that God is the good shepherd. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. Uh, and when you come uh, in on the mouth of the lion, uh, he's not going to leave you there. He's going to tear that mouth open. David said, I took out my sheep, but I didn't stop there. I took off the head of the lion. I put my hand on his neck. And when I begin to squeeze it, I hear old proud king of the trunk begin to throw up. And I didn't let it go until it dropped dead. Somebody give God praise. Oh God. And he says, if that's not enough, I have one more. <laughs> Amen. Come, Mother Bear came for my sheep, but I would not let him go. I let her go. And when Saul hear the testimony, Saul said, okay. Amen. Praise God. Let me let me set you up. Let me fix you up. Amen. And Saul was fixing up David and he put on the helmet, put on his breastplate. Praise the name of the Lord. You see, sometimes when God has a work for you to do, Amen. Man is going to want to set you up and fix you up and tell you this is how you're supposed to do it. And this is how it's supposed to go. Amen. And this is what the book says. But there are some situations that the book didn't tell you how to deal That's with it. Right. I said there are some situations. Amen. We had a textbook in the university had no answers to give. Amen. What did the book say about COVID? Hallelujah. There was nothing in the book about COVID. Amen. What did the professors leave us instruction about? There was nothing. So there are, there are some things. Amen. Man would want to fix you up. But you got to know God for yourself because sometimes Amen. God jumped you out of the box. And he used you like you've never used anybody before. And he tell you things you've never tell anybody before. And you got to know God to maneuver. As he put on the coat upon Saul, Amen. Saul tried to move, but David tried to move, but David said something don't feel right. Mm -hmm. Said something don't feel right. Mm -hmm. Amen. He said, I'm never. He said, this thing put my head too heavy. I can't manage this thing for my head. I never put on one before. And when he put on the breastplate, he said, my hand can't move me uncomfortable. And when he put on the booty, he said, my foot can't move. He said, you know, I'm going to me and he'll shake him up. And he said, son, when I met the lion, I didn't have no carnal weapon. When I went to Peter, I didn't have no carnal weapon. So I'm going to use what I'm used to. And what I'm used to is the power of God. What I'm used to is me sitting. What I'm used to is fasting and prayer. Oh, somebody did God a praise. You see, sometimes when you're faced with a child, you are all kind of counselors. Some will tell you, I'm all father, go show who was in Thomas. And some will tell you, oh, mother, who was who was in Mary. Lord God Almighty. But I The 
because some trust in horses uh, and some in chariot uh, but David says I will remember the name of the Lord uh, for the name of the Lord uh, is a strong and mighty tower uh, the righteous remembering uh, so he said cover me with the name of the Lord uh, cover me on a spiritual plane. Yeah. I'm not going to engage him on a physical plane. No, sir. Amen. No, don't try to hold muscle the giant. You can't do that. No, sir. Don't try. Amen. To wrestle with the giant. No, sir. You can't do it. You have to fight him on another plane. Yeah. David said, I'm fighting him on a spiritual plane. Because he knows nothing about spiritual warfare. Right. He knows how to use right. sword and spear. Right. But I'm going to another plane. I wonder if somebody's here to hear. You see, when the crocodile catches a lion, he don't fight him on the land. He takes him in the water. Because that's a different kind of battle when he's fighting the lion in the water. Because it's a different dimension of fight. But when he gets in that water and begins to spin, he disorient that lion and that lion has no fight in the water. When the eagle wanna fight a snake, he pick him up and he takes him high and he fights him on another plane. But David said, I'm gonna fight him on another plane. Cause he's coming to me with sword and spear. But I'm coming to him on another dimension. He's not gonna be able to touch me. He said, Goliath, you can't touch this. And somebody lift their hands and worship God in the house. Yes, Jesus. But then he said, I'll use what I'm used to. <laughs> use what you're used to. He went down and he took up five little stones and he came back up. <laughs> now I believe when he went down to that brook, he spent a little time in prayers. And he said, Lord, you are my shepherd, I shall not want. And even though I go through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. After me, he said a little prayer. I said, Lord, thou art my light and my salvation. Who shall I fear? Thou art the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? For when the enemy came upon me like a flood, you will lift up a standard. And the whole should it up against me. In this will I be confident. And I believe David got a faith and strength. And he journeyed over the hill. Singing, I feel like run to a troop. And I feel like leap over a wall. I believe he came up singing, bless me God, who keeps my fingers to fight. I wonder if somebody understand. You've got to engage the enemy on a spiritual plane. Because the weapons of our warfare, they are not carnal, but they are mighty true God. Ah, they are able to pull down straw subdue kingdoms. I want there is somebody understand. Hallelujah. When David was going up to the lions, Amen, Goliath says, I'm going to take you and feed the birds. 
<laughs> and he laughed and said, Am I a dog that you're coming to me with a sling and a stone? Amen. And Goliath came towards David. And David said, You coming? I'm coming too. Amen. He says, You come to me with a sword and a spear. But I'm not running. I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm meeting you. I Eyeball to eyeball. I am not giving you my back. I'm showing you my face. He said, I'm coming to you on a different dimension, on a different level. I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, whom you have defied. Somebody give Jesus praise in the house. Amen. I tell your fear. In the days of the great Mike Tyson, amen, the opponents were defeated before they go into the ring. Amen. Within the first round, second round, third round, they would be on the canvas because they went there just running around and trying to avoid, amen, this, this creature of a man. Amen. And he intimidated them with his smile. Amen. But the first man that went into the hearing and went up to my Tyson face and looked him in the eye and said, Me not run from you. God, you have two fists and me have two. And look him in the eye. My Tyson get confused. Because he never meet a man who will look him in the eye. And I come up to him two to two. He get confused. And if he's going to work no more, he must start biting. Because when you start, Look the enemy in the eye. You take out the venom out of his intimidation. He knows say you fear not. And when he know that you fear not, he get confused. When he sees it, you come to church and still got your praise. He get confused. When the Lord went to went to church, he lift up his hand. And he said, the Lord give it up, and the Lord take it up, but he confused the devil. Somebody give God a praise of the devil want you to sit down and cry. He want you to sit down and sob. He want you to sit down and do nothing, but rise up. Oh, give me a night. 
Holy Ghost just direct it to the only exposed portion of the light. The only exposed portion was the little break between his eyes that allowed him to see but with precision of the divine GPS and with the atomic power with the dunamis of the Holy Ghost when it hit Goliath Goliath didn't know what he did when somebody gave God praise Goliath didn't know what he did when he hit a man in his heart in go upward when Goliath did come forward for at the name of Jesus every giant shall be powerful and every giant shall confess cause God has given him a name which is above every name that at the name of Jesus every giant